Hello, Bio30. Welcome to Labels and Functions of the Eyeball, part of Lesson 6. So today in this lesson, you're going to learn the structures of the eyes, and then you are also going to learn the functions of the structures of the eyes. So let's talk about our eyes. So scientists estimate that in sighted people, vision supplies about 80 to 90 percent of the important sensory information reaching your brain. So that's a big, big portion. Our human eye is essentially a fluid-filled hollow ball. And you're going to see that when we do an eye dissection. It's about 2.5 centimeters in diameter. Now the cool thing is it bends light coming into your uh, eye. It bends incoming, sorry, it bends incoming light energy onto the center of the retina at the back of your eye. This allows for you to see because it activates cones and rods and it's very, very fun and very cool and I'm so excited to talk about it. So let's start by labeling the picture of the eye. So we're gonna stop it, start at the very top. I am gonna talk about each function as we go along afterwards. So right now it's just about labeling it and probably saying the words out loud so you know what they sound like. So the first one is the sclera. Now the sclera, it's hard to tell though, it's actually pointing to the white part of your eye. Okay, so that's the white outer layer, just in case you're having a hard time seeing what it's pointing to. Then the next layer, it's this one right here, is called the choroid. Followed here by the suspensory ligaments on either side of the lens. You have your iris, your pupil, your lens, the cornea your aqueous humor, your ciliary muscles, and your vitreous humor. That's a lot of parts on the front. So on the back side, you have your retina, your fulvia centralis, your optic disc, or what we call the blind spot, and your optic nerve. So take a moment, pause here, and add those into your notes. So what I want to do is I want to go through each of the functions, starting with the sclera, the cornea, and we'll discuss what it is. So here's another picture of the human eye, a little bit different looking, okay, a little bit different uh, language on it, but essentially the structures here are important. So the sclera, what is the sclera? The sclera is the tough white outer layer that protects and supports your eye, okay? So it's the whites of your eye, essentially. The cornea is on the front side of your eye. So it's the tough outer layer that refracts or what we say bends light that and then pushes it towards the pupil. So it bends light towards the pupil to enter into your eye. Those are the two outer structures of your eye. Um, they're both very, very important because they are very important for protection, all right? You get anything on your cornea or scratch your cornea, you're gonna have a hard time seeing because it's gonna be blurry. If you damage the sclera, it may not be, uh, you could get a tear, which could be dangerous because then things could enter your eye and so forth. So let's talk about the choroid and the iris, which is now the middle layers of the eye. So we talked about the outer layers of the eye. Your choroid and your iris are also very important. Now the iris is the part of your eye that you can see that is colored. It's the pigmented muscle that controls pupil size. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. If you um, put that your iris is just the colored part of your eye, on a quiz or a test, I'm gonna mark it wrong. We are now in grade 12, we're no longer in grade eight. Okay, we did this in grade eight. The key part to the iris is all about the controlling of pupil size. We talked about in sympathetic uh, responses, how your eyes dilate so the pupil looks like it's getting bigger, when in actuality, it's the iris, the color part of your eye, that's shrinking and opening up the hole or the pupil so that you can let more light in. So the iris actually controls the size of your eye, the black part that you see. The choroid or the black, uh, black layer inside your eye prevents light from scattering. So when light comes in, you want to capture that light. You don't want it to bounce everywhere. So light absorb, black will absorb light. So it prevents the light from scattering and it contains a ton of blood vessels that actually supply the blood to your retina. Let's talk about the pupil. The pupil. The pupil is actually just a hole in your eye. Okay. Most people think it's a structure or an actual like thing that is that you when you dissect the eye, they're like, where's the pupil? Well, it's actually just a hole. 
Okay. It's a hole that allows light to enter into your eye. Hence why you have the cornea covering it. Because if it's a hole and the cornea is damaged, things could get straight inside your eye, which is really bad. So we have the cornea protecting it. And we have the iris that controls the amount of light that lets it in and out. The reason why our pupil is black is because we don't have lights on the inside of our eyes. It's not like we can go and press a little button, chink, and then all of a sudden we're shining light out of our eyeballs. If that was the case, then our pupils would be showing light. But because there's nothing inside our eyes except darkness, we see black as our pupils because that's what's back there is there's no light. So the pupil is actually a hole in the center of your eye. Your lens, which is located just behind it, focuses the image on the retina. And we call this changing shape of the lens accommodation. So what that means is, is when light enters through your cornea and goes through your pupil and hits your lens, your lens has to send it all the way back to the retina. Now, sometimes when you're trying to see things far away, okay, your lens will have to change its shape to make sure that you can see things far away. Or if you're trying to look at something up close, it'll change shape so that you can see something up close. That's called accommodation. And it, essentially, as you get older, that gets a lot harder and harder to do because the lens is made out of proteins. And as your lens gets older and older, it actually starts to get less and less flexible. And it's why most people in their later adult lives need glasses or reading glasses because their lens can't actually accommodate properly. The lens is not clear. It's actually slightly yellowish in color. And that's again to, for a protection mechanism. It actually helps with UV light. So we don't want UV light directly into the back of our eye because it can burn our retina. So it actually helps filter that light as it enters in. Let's talk about the liquidy parts of your eye. So the aqueous humor. This is the jelly-like material in front of your lens. It supplies the cornea with nutrients, bends lights, and maintains the shape at the front of your eye. So it's really important for nutrient purposes, obviously, to keep things healthy. But again, bending light is also super important. The vitreous humor on the inside is also a liquidy gel, but it bends light and gives eye the structure. So if you were to take the vitreous humor out, your eyeball would collapse because that humor is creating the pressure all around that holds that structure. The retina. So this one is the, in my opinion, the most important part of your eye because this is where your light sensitive cells, rods and cones, and your bipolar cells are located. Now rods and cones help you see light and in dim color, and so help you see color and help you see in dim light. Cones are for color, rods are for dim light. So it's really important that when we're thinking about how we see things around us, when you look with something with color, those are your cones. They're allowing you to see all different types of colors. And if you were to look and think about the peripheral vision you have, like if you were just to put your fingers just on the outside of your face, but not, but look straight forward, you can still see your fingers but you can't really tell what colors they are. And that's because your rods don't detect color. They detect uh, shades, like lights and darks. They, your fingers, they're peripheral. They know they're there. Your rods are letting you know they're there, but they don't have the same type of mechanism as the cones to say, see color. So the retina contains tons and tons and tons of these photo uh, receptors in the back of your eye. So this is, like I said, photoreceptors for dim light, which are rods. And then we have the photoreceptors for bright light or color and fine detail are cones. Cones also allow you to do things like reading because it allows for you to see fine details on the print on the paper and whatnot. So it's very important. Rods are called rods because they're shaped like rods and cones are called cones because they're kind of shaped like cones. All right. So let's talk about the fovea centralis. The fovea centralis is located on your retina and it is the most sensitive area of the retina. It has the highest concentration of cones, meaning you have the greatest visual acuity. Acu acuity. There we go. Accuracy, essentially. This is what gives you the best ability to see is the fovea centralis. All right. So it's located at the very back. It's full and full, full of tons and tons of cones and it allows you to do so much. To find the fovea centralis, essentially, if you were to take a, when you dissect your eyeball, you're going to literally take a line, a fake line, and you're going to draw a center line from your lens straight to the back. And that's essentially where the fovea centralis should be. Our blind spot. 
So the blind spot is essentially where the retina attaches to the optic nerve. A blind spot is what actually makes the human eye less perfect and it's not a perfect organism or perfect structure, okay? And that's because um, some animals don't have blind spots, which is actually pretty beneficial. But this is where the retina attaches to the optic nerve and there are no rods and no cones in the blind spot. The blind spot is right before the optic nerve and the optic nerve's job is to carry the impulse and the information out to your occipital lobe. So remembering your occipital lobe is for vision. This, your eye would be your sensory receptor. Your optic nerve would be your sensory neuron, carrying it to your brain and then your brain interprets it and moves it forward, okay? So that's the how these three structures are connected. The suspensory ligament, and the optic nerve are, I guess, the last couple of things, even though I've kind of talked about optic nerve, but the optic nerve um, sends messages from the eye to the occipital lobe, and then your suspensory ligaments are important for accommodation and to maintain tension. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Oh, the ciliary muscles. I don't think I talked about the ciliary muscles. The ciliary muscles, and I apologize, the ciliary muscles are what helps um, move the iris. Right, so um, the ciliary muscles are there to help move the iris and make it bigger and make it smaller, to help that pupil either be a larger pupil or a smaller pupil. I apologize, I can't believe I forgot this. So essentially, ladies and gentlemen, here is the structure of the eye. Take a moment, maybe pause the video, see if you can pick out the structures you think you can name. We are gonna do a drawing quiz by naming the structures and their functions. So in this lesson, you should have learned the structures of the eyes and the functions of